And hello everybody. Today we're gonna draw in this Merrowman Nima sign sketchbook, I think is how you say it. It's very cool. It's got, got all these Japanese letters in here. And believe it or not, it's got pieces of paper in here that are very smooth and good feeling. Yeah. So in there, we're gonna draw with this Lamy All-Star. And uh, let's pop this open. I haven't actually looked at this yet. Oof. There it is. This is the ocean blue. Extra fine nib, all right. And uh, we're gonna use the majestic blue diamine ink, all right. Now these pens, they, um, this, what does this say, remove? Remove this, all right. Uh, it comes with a cartridge, but we're not gonna use this cartridge. This shipped f to me. All this stuff came from Goulet Pens. And we're gonna be giving all this stuff you see here, see down in the description, there's a link. You can enter the giveaway to get all this stuff. All this stuff you see here. Use my art supplies. Make your own art. So we're gonna open this ink carefully dangerously right on top of the rest of the stuff and so you, you can either use a lot of fountain pens with a cartridge ink like this or you can use a, a piston thing I prefer these piston plunger things so you can just keep refilling it indefinitely you don't have to keep buying the cartridges all right so first you put it down all the way and then we um, put it in here we lift it back up, and then have a little piston full of this majestic blue ink in our ocean blue pen. I mean, there is a hole in the end of here, but I guess some sort of magic keeps it from just like falling out. Something to do with like surface tension and capillary something or other. There's some science behind it. All right, we're gonna pop this right back in here. There's a little notch. Screw this back on here. Hmm. We'll be good to go. I'm gonna try to get started on a post-it note here. Oh, it went, it just got started really fast. Is it narcissistic of me? to always write, the first thing I always do is write my name. So you can see here we've got the extra fine nib and uh, it's working really good. Before we get too far, let me put my the, the lid back on the ink. Spilling a whole bottle of ink, that's, that's, a, that's nightmare fuel right there. All right, let's start drawing. First page, let's go. Now, one thing I will say is that there seems to be a, a common factor among these papers that get sold with and packaged with fountain pens, and that is that it's, they're very smooth, they don't have a lot of tooth to them, and I think this is so that people, uh, like when they buy like these shimmering inks and inks with a bit of sheen to them and, uh, and different, like, people, people really get into it with inks that like, they pool down a little bit when they're writing all their special cal calligraphic letters and stuff like this. Uh, they're like, it's like specialist paper. People really get into it. Anyways, what I'm saying is this smooth paper, it's nice, but it is also prone to one uh, incredible, uh, incredibly annoying thing, which is smudging. You have to be very careful with this stuff. It smudges very easily, and there actually was quite a bit of smudging going on here, mostly in the first half of this drawing when I wasn't thinking about it. And people always say, Peter, how do you how do you avoid smudging? What do you do about it? You can take a few preventative measures, like wear some sort of smudge guard on your hand. I used to take just like cheap cotton gloves and cut the first three fingers off the thumb, the, f the pointer finger and the middle finger. It's hard to grip a pen when you've got cl cloth gloves on. It's all it's all slippery and smooth, just like the paper. But 
Uh, really, I just find it's better to embrace the smudge most of the time. It adds, at least with my drawings, it seems to add a bit of mm, that smudgy, smoky, grimy, gritty atmosphere to it. Just embrace it. Let it go. That's the way. Let the art... You don't do art. Let the art do you. Okay? And sometimes the art does a few smudges. And so there are, fair, there are a few a few smudges at the first part of this drawing, and then I realized what was going on, and I consciously made the decision to kind of work my way from the left side of the paper to the right side of the paper so that I wouldn't have my hand resting on top of other lines I'd already drawn for too much of the time. But the smudges I already made weren't too bad. They were manageable. There was only there were a couple of times when I made a smudge and I I threw the pen across the room. By that I meant I, mean I, I put it down and I made a little fist and went and then I picked it back up and kept drawing. In my experience, these pens do work pretty good. They work really well with almost any other kind of paper as well. Fountain pens are very robust and versatile. You can they're really good for writing on like even watercolor paper and stuff like that because they have a very strong nib. If you use if, you have a, if you're having problems with like uh, your felt-tipped pens, felt-tipped pens, we all know, they have very fragile nibs, right? Especially if you get down to the very fine, you know, like a zero, like a point zero one or something like that. If you try drawing too much on a, like, a, like a very toothy, rough watercolor paper, sometimes you can feel like you're really damaging the tip. Good fountain pen, you'd be good to go because it's all metal. It's all metal. You just, just have a heyday with it. Now in this drawing, I was enjoying creating textures by drawing lots of little lines close to each other. And I would take little chunks and draw them more close to each other and other little chunks, loosen it up a little bit. And in some spaces, I took the liberty, my drawing, my freedom, I took the liberty of not drawing any lines at all in those spaces. There's some spots of the paper I totally ignored. Interestingly enough, those parts of the paper where I didn't draw any lines, I think, are, are the, the, the parts of the paper you, your eyes are drawn to the most. It's the first thing you see when you look at it, and then maybe your eyes kind of wander about, go meandering over to the, the texturous goodness. You get sucked into the rest of it, where I've drawn all the little lines you know, tucked in there into, into each other. I don't know. <laughs> lines are cool. Scribble. There's a lot. It's kind of like weird long cross hatching. I think. I did not refill this pen uh, at all during the whole drawing, and I didn't even think about it. But then afterwards, I thought, well, I didn't have to refill it all. And then I opened it up, and it was bone dry. Like it was. This is this drawing you see here is exactly one one pen cartridge worth of ink. That that's. Uh, it's a drawing's worth. I mean, that's a cartridge's worth of drawing. Is that, is that how we measure it? Also, the nice thing about fountain pens, and the reason why a lot of people buy them, is that they're fun to write with, very satisfying to write with. And writing, to me, is satisfying because it's also drawing. Words are made up of lines. And I like words, and I like lines, and it's the perfect combination is writing things out. And so sometimes I have little notebooks where I just write out my wordles, my word doodles, where I just string together words and whatnot. And this paper is very good for that. And the pen is, and everything. Almost all the wordles I write, I write with uh, fountain pens. Usually, my, probably my most used fountain pen is a Coico Sport. Maybe because when you put the lid on it, it gets so small. Pop that sucker right in your pocket. It's uh, very satisfying. But then you take the lid off and put it on there. It gets big again. It's magical. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, goodbye. Good luck. Good afternoon. And uh, I'm bad at goodbyes. This is not... This is not goodbye. Look, until next time, okay? I love you. Ooh. Uh.